I have worked with over 300 online business owners in my five years as a business mentor. And I can tell you one thing, it is really easy to get lost in the sauce when you're first trying to start your business, grow your business. It's like, what do I do? every single day that's gonna help me but not overwhelm me. It's hard to get into that headspace and know what needs to happen when. This training is gonna be all about five things I was doing every single day for at least the first year and a half to two years of business that helped me stay extremely consistent, that contributed to growth and increased sales, and that allowed me to be like a happy, normal person as a new business owner without being totally overwhelmed, totally burnt out. And these are things that I still do to this day to increase my success, grow my client base, and keep myself, again, a happy, thriving, sustainable business owner. So let's get into it. And if y'all are new here, hi, my name's Emily. I have been a full-time business mentor for like four and a half, five years now. I got my start as a health coach in this space and I really have a passion for entrepreneurship, financial freedom. And my biggest passion is educating women on how they can take an idea that they have, a vision for their life and turn it into a thriving online business. So without further ado, we're gonna be diving into a really great training today, daily tasks. It's really really easy in the beginning of business to feel like you don't know what you're supposed to be doing every single day. When you aren't maybe seeing the bulk of sales you want to see, you're feeling a little bit like shaky and how you're going to create the success that you want. It's like, what do I need to be doing? What's the most important? And I think that these five tasks and actions will keep you on the straight and narrow. Even if you're rotating through this cycle one or two times a week, it is absolutely better than nothing and better than just aimless posting on social media any day of the week. If you're watching this video and you are interested in online business and you found me through some of my other like health coaching entrepreneurship videos, I have a video all about my biggest recommendation for how to get your certification, where to do that, what's the best accreditation, all that jazz. I will link that down below as well as up here. And I will put all the information on how you can get $750 off of a health coaching certification that I highly recommend in the description box down below. And if you are particularly interested in entrepreneurship, financial freedom, financial abundance, growing your wealth, et cetera, et cetera, not just business strategy, my podcast, the first million podcast goes live every other week here on YouTube. It's also available on Spotify and Apple podcasts. And I have a ton of other social media platforms, specifically TikTok is thriving right now for the podcast, for coaching, and I will link all of that down below. I do a ton of exclusive content there, education every single day. It's a great place to learn little tidbits, pick up things along the way, and it's just honestly so much fun. And y'all, I feel like I haven't sat down and filmed a training like this in so long. If you're not following me on my other social medias, I was living in Utah for the summer and did all of my pre-recording before I left. So literally like four months ago, then I was just in Europe for almost a month, and now I'm finally back in my office, at my desk. I'm so happy. And I have these gorgeous flower arrangements behind me because my sister got married this weekend and I did make off with a few bouquets that were gonna go in the trash. And I was like, these will be so cute to have in the background of my YouTube video. Like I mentioned, now that I'm four and a half, five years into business, I don't do these tasks every single day, but I still get on a rotation of doing these things every single week for sure in my business and for my clients who are growing their businesses, starting their businesses just like you probably are. These are things that are essential for keeping them on track, keeping them motivated, keeping them consistent. So let's dive right into number one thing you need to be doing every single day as an online business owner trying to grow, trying to increase sales, you need to be doing lead generation and ideal client engagement. Let me just start by saying you have to drop your pride at the door, drop your ego at the door right now. Stop thinking that ideal clients are just going to come rushing into your inbox from the second you start posting about your business. That is simply not the case. When you are a new business owner, you are climbing an uphill battle, okay? When it comes to attracting the right audience and then getting them to trust you enough and like you enough to actually buy from you. So your secret weapon is going to come in the form of not being afraid and having the knowledge to do direct client or potential client outreach. So lead generation. And this is something that people hire me specifically for. They'll join my business mentorships and be like, Emily, I specifically want you to teach me lead generation because they can't find a very direct way to do this. I'm going to give you a little bit of an overview today, things that'll get you started. You guys always know you can book a free 30 minute strategy session down below. I will link that. It's always linked. My availability updates every single week. So that's a really good way to get started if you feel like you need a little bit more than what you're getting in today's training. 
timing. Really easy ways to get started with lead generation and outreach, because I know it can sound very, very intimidating. Number one, first thing, if you are consistently posting on social media, start reaching out to your new followers. Anybody that follows you on social media that you have not had an authentic conversation with, just welcoming them to the community, asking what more you can share that'd be valuable to them, you need to be doing that and you need to be tracking these interactions on a lead tracker. This is something I teach my clients all the time, but tracking interactions so you know who might be an interested potential lead for you. This is gonna be your shortcut to understanding where your potential clients may be when you're still building that trust within your actual audience and people are not maybe applying in droves to work with you organically. Your kind of like next step of this process is gonna be to actually generate relevant conversations outside your existing audience. This is something that I teach really frequently as well is the idea that there are already places in the online space where your ideal client is looking for information. There are social media accounts that they're following, influencers they're looking up to, keywords that they're searching. If you can tap into the network that your ideal clients are already tapped into and you can get out there and generate conversations and start answering questions and plugging yourself in, you will connect yourself with the right people so much faster. You can have one-to-one authentic conversations that can then lead to amazing potential potential client relationships. As a general rule, you should either have a time goal or a numbers goal for lead generation every single week, such as I want to generate, you know, 10 new conversations every other day in my business that by the end of the week, I have generated maybe like 40 new potential leads into my business, or I want to outreach to this many new people. Or maybe you say, hey, for 30 minutes a day, I'm going to sit down, I'm going to answer questions in Facebook groups, I'm going to respond to comments, I'm going to speak to people, have conversations and not just focus so much on posting that I'm not actually talking to people one by one and networking actively. If it's all sounding a little bit intimidating, start by just engaging with people that are already in your audience through responding to comments, uh, setting engagement opportunities in your stories, and then responding to those, generating conversations that are very organic. It does not have to be salesy or anything crazy like that. This idea just needs to exist of getting into the habit of talking to people that are potential leads in conversations that you are starting almost every single day in your business. When that starts happening, you will see your sales start going through the roof. You can improve your conversational skills. You'll book more sales calls. And overall, you'll see a major increase in clients into your business. Another thing that I used to do every single day, and actually this is probably in this whole list, the thing that I still do the most is I save concepts for social media content every single day. When I am scrolling on social media, I am essentially never just like mindlessly working through, you know, content and like zoning out, dissociating. We all do it at times, but usually what I'm doing is even if I'm on social media for enjoyment, if I'm on TikTok, for instance, I'm saving content that is relevant to my brand, that is relevant to my industry. I'm saving and sending myself on other accounts even Content that I feel like is good inspiration for me, educates me in some way, might be a good example for my clients, but I'm always using my time scrolling on social media for my own benefit in business. What this leaves me with at the end of the week is if I'm scrolling for a couple hours a day sometimes, like I work full time, like from my phone basically. So if I'm on social media a lot, saving, you know, 10, 20 pieces of content every couple days, and I go through those pieces of content at the end of the week, for me, I actually do it on Mondays, I sit down, go through that content, and I write myself scripts and concepts for my own content. That means I can plan out my filming days in the future. I'm very prepared. I'm never out of ideas, never out of filming styles, and I know what's happening in my industry, what's performing well. It keeps me very in the loop, and it is so helpful for not having to think of everything organically. You can pull inspiration from the time you're already spending on social media. And like I said, when I go through and spend time scripting out my content and pulling my ideas, from content that I've saved or sent myself, then I can plan a day for filming. I don't just like plan content and then film it randomly. Like I sit down, I film things. I have a couple filming days every single week and then I'm done and I can walk away. You guys would be so surprised. Even people that are filming the type of content where they're like sitting in bed or they're in their car, that's pre-planned. Like if they're posting really consistently and that's like a signature style of their content, they didn't just randomly think of an idea and like pull their phone out the second they rolled out of bed. They had the idea already in their head. It's already planned out. They had generally planned to film at that time. There's more planning that goes into it than you would think. So you yourself need to get in the habit of gaining inspiration wherever you can find it, documenting that, scripting your own ideas, and then planning 
really specific filming times in your schedule throughout the week or throughout the month. This is huge. This next one, something that I didn't start doing for a while actually in my business. And it was causing me just like so many problems. And it was that I was over scheduling myself. So my next piece of advice, number three thing you need to be doing daily, under scheduling yourself and completing the tasks that you start. Okay. What I mean by this, it is really, really easy to get lost in the sauce and think that you're doing a lot. Think that you're really busy just because you are working at all hours of the day. You're doing something, but you're never actually reaching 100% completion on a singular task that you need to do. This used to happen to me all the time. If you're doing this, you are not alone. It's not something to be embarrassed about, but over scheduling yourself and working on 10 projects every single day, but never actually completing any of them does not win you an award. There's no award for pushing yourself to the limit of busy work and then feeling like you always have 10 open-ended projects going on. You do, however, win clients and money and all the things you're looking for in your business. You win or have access to those things when you complete projects with high quality, high efficiency, and then you move on to the next thing again with high quality and efficiency and you actually check things off the list. Now, the way that I get this stuff done is through, like I said, under scheduling myself. So I might think that I have time to get 10 things done in a day, or maybe I have like three projects on my to-do list. I'm like, hey, I can do all those tomorrow. And the reality is I probably have time to work on like 50% of the first project, get that all the way done, and then move on. And that's going to get me farther in the direction that I want to go than getting to like 10%, 15% on a bunch of different projects and like always keeping it going and going and going, never getting anything done. The reality is there's like a lot of wasted time in unfinished projects. This is just a little wisdom from a girl who's owned a business for years now. When you have projects that continue to bleed over day to day to day, and they never get finished, and you're always making like a little bit of progress, but you sit down, and every time you have to like reacquaint yourself, where did I stop, where did I leave off, I'm not in the headspace that I was in, like there's so much time that gets wasted. If you can eliminate that time to re-familiarize yourself with the project, and you just continue all the way through to 50%, 75%, 100% of the way done, you're going to find success so much faster because projects will be completed, again, with higher quality, higher efficiency, and less of a mental load on you to keep getting reacquainted with what you're doing, where did you stop, where do you need to start, et cetera, et cetera. I tried to tell you all that I don't do these things every day, but the more I read this list, the more I'm like, yeah, these are all things that I still try to do every single day. This next one, educating myself in external areas or just educating myself in general. Okay, when I say external areas, I mean, let's say I'm working on social media and I'm building my skills there and I'm dedicating my time. I make it a point that sometime in the day or sometime in the week, I'm also developing my skills in another area. I'm educating myself on something else besides like the main source of income, the main project on my mind. And the reason for that is there's multiple reasons. Number one is like, you got to stay sharp. If you're going to be a business owner, you need to be able to use multiple parts of your brain at different times. And for me, staying sharp, staying smart means continuing to learn and developing my mind in multiple areas. So I do that very intentionally. For example, I work on my business and my online brand, but I also like three years ago completed a self study on real estate investing and purchased my first two investment properties and really like leaned into learning something else. And this was amazing for me because I learned a whole other business. I started a whole other business, but I also didn't obsess over my original business, my core source of income. I allowed it to kind of have its ups and downs and do what it was gonna do. And I was still thriving in another area. My brain was still being sharpened and honed in in another area. I was making different connections and there's just nothing bad ever um, that will come from learning consistently and diversifying your education because it leads to diversifying your income, diversifying your interests, uh, your interactions. There's so much good that comes from diversity in all forms as a business owner and most importantly not obsessing over your business and letting it grow in its own time as long as you're being consistent is so important and I think that educating yourself in other areas protects you from that obsession or fixation that can make business very unsustainable and last but not least probably the most important thing anyone can ever say to you if you want to be an entrepreneur you must every single day find forms of joy outside of your business, non-business related joy, okay? Let's look at it this way. 
it would not be normal and it is not normal when you have a friend that is like only happy if they have a good day at work. They're obsessed with their work wins, but they have like nothing going on in their personal life. If that happens with somebody who works in the corporate space, you're like, oh my God, get a life. Like, what are you doing? Nobody wants to be around that person. I've had people in my own life that I've had to cut out because they're like that. And it's so hard to deal with. But for some reason, entrepreneurs like get a pass. It's like, yeah, of course, it's my business. I'm going to be so tied up in it, so devoid of any work-life balance that when I have a good day at work, I'm going to have a good day personally. But if I have a bad day at work at my business and in my business, and if sales are down or I struggled with something or the social media algorithms were acting weird that day, I'm going to be pissed off and I'm going to be in a rut. That is the most surefire way to reach burnout before you ever see success in your business. It is the most surefire way to have the most unsustainable business model when you tie in your own personal joy into the successes and failures of your business. I'll guarantee you one thing, and I don't guarantee many things in business, okay? Business will jerk you around left, right, and center, try to shake you off your course because it is a professional thing that you are tying in very close to like your heart. It is like your baby when you start a business, right? It is your job if you want to have a sustainable business and to be a smart and successful business owner to separate your personal joy from your business. Because like I said, I can guarantee you that business will have ups and downs. And I can also guarantee you that if you tie your personal emotions to those ups and downs, you will burn out so fast and reach emotional exhaustion and fatigue so quickly you'll never have the chance to be truly successful in your business. And I think that is one of the biggest, like I said, pieces of wisdom that I could give you, that any business owner could give you is to find sources of joy outside your business and outside of work. So like hobbies are so important. Doing things that make you excited and happy and feel fulfilled that have nothing to do with business means you're going to be able to be more consistent and stable and steady in your business, which in turn means you will be more successful in the end, which is what we're looking for here. And I promise y'all, if you do these things consistently, like I said, maybe every single day, but if you consistently do these things, at least on a cycle, like one or two times through a week, you will be such a happier, more successful, more consistent business owner. And these are things that, like I said, the more I like lean into the list and read into it, the more I'm like, no, I still do these things basically every day in my business. And to some points more than others, these things have like actually changed my life like pretty significantly, even in the last couple of years, not just in the beginning of business. So learn these things now at the beginning so they can continue to change your life as you move forward. And I hope this was so helpful for you guys. I'm so excited to be back home, just like settling in, creating more really exciting content for you guys. And I wanted to say that if you have a business topic, a piece of strategy, something you've heard me talk about before that you want me to talk about again, please let me know. I will link my business Instagram in the caption down below in the description down below. Please send me a DM if you have a request for a video or if you have a question you'd like me to add to a Q&A. I think I'm going to do a Q&A soon. Um, and I would love to get back in touch with you guys and learn about what I can share that's going to be the most helpful for y'all. So definitely do that. And I'm just wishing you guys all the best as always in your businesses, in your entrepreneurial pursuits. I believe in you so much. All my information to get in touch directly if you'd like to is down below and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys. Mwah.